Apple Card is the credit card created by Apple. You earn 3% daily cash back up front when you use it to buy a new iPhone 15, AirPods, or any products at Apple. And you can automatically grow your daily cash at 4.15% annual percentage yield when you open a high-yield savings account. Apply for Apple Card in the Wallet app on iPhone. Apple Card subject to credit approval. Savings is available to Apple Card owners subject to eligibility. Savings accounts by Goldman Sachs Bank USA. Member FDIC. Terms apply. This episode is brought to you by Columbia Sportswear. It's snowing again, and that wind chill is killer. But you're not worried about that because you shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection. It's warmth perfected with tiny gold dots that reflect your body heat inside and protect you from the cold outside. No snow or chilly temps can stop you now. Go out anyway. Shop the Omni Heat Infinity Collection now at Columbia.com slash infinity. Saturday. Christmas comes early. Unbelievable. Welcome to this incredible scene. Bills. To the end zone. Chargers. It's a touchdown. An exclusive NFL game. This is fantastic. Live in primetime. Wow. Only on Peacock. With a Christmas gift to their fans. They're having some fun now. Bills versus Chargers. Saturday, 730 Eastern. Exclusively on Peacock. The holidays are a time to feel and create joy. And what could be more joyous than the look on her face as she unwraps a stunning new jewelry piece from Blue Nile? How about getting 50% off your purchase? Blue Nile offers premium quality, priced below traditional retail. Their online experts are available 24-7 to answer any questions and make sure you've picked the perfect gift. For a limited time, you can get 50% off at BlueNile.com. That's 50% off at BlueNile.com. Cool. All right. Well, I want to see this thing or what as much of it as I can, at least. <laughs> Let me uh, wait. Do I have share privileges here? I don't have share. Priv- That's embarrassing, Cody. We're two years into this. <laughs> Remember, we just wow. skipped away from this. Now we're doing it in person. So I wasn't ready for this. You guys did get back together for your first in-person show last week, right? Yes. Well, just uh, this week. Was that this week? Yeah. I've listened to that. It's been a long week and I know it's only Thursday, so. No, it feels good to be back in person. It was a little chaotic, it but you know, we'll I listened to it. Uh, was that last night I listened to it? So see, I do listen, guys. Also, also, we should definitely have the how do we pronounce uh, Vunjevic's name contest because that was a <laughs> that was and and you're as two representatives from the team here. I know this is not your department, but there was no pronunciation released with that player like there normally is. So I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't think they're going to until they can talk to him in person anymore. I, I, I genuinely think that's what it's like. It's like Remy Voltaire with with Remy last year. You know, he was like he got here and he was like, yeah, everybody calls me Walter. And then by mid season, he was like, kind of want to be called Voltaire, which is really <laughs> yeah. my name. You know, um, you never know with with that. Um, I don't know how to I, I believe it's Vunjevic. I heard Mick Schaefer say it last night on uh, 41 as Vunjevic. So maybe he got that from the from, you know, the guys on the. I like that better country. because that J is not just entirely being ignored in, in that pronunciation. So I like Nicola. that one better. Nicola. Yeah, just call him Nicola. Yeah. Yeah. I just go with whatever name I think I can come closest to pronouncing. Well, that, I mean you're you're all in on on Jean East, though. You've got that one figured out. That's because the Cypriots on the podcast told me how to say it. And I still question it, but we are we are big in Cyprus right now. I just learned this. I was talking with our uh, our social media folks um, a little bit earlier this week about that. I didn't realize how just how big that um, that should get us a third kit, man. Oh, hey, if Cyprus, if you're listening, all of Cyprus. I'm talking to the Plus entire nation. SKC two kits in Ghana. Here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Does second team kits count towards that tally? Uh, no, they do not. Um, that again is another podcast about how these sporting KC two kits get um, right. get get determined. All right, let's do a let's do a share screen. Let's see what we can do here. Um, I guess we're just going to look at a Dropbox link because um, this is super professional and and we're on top of it. Because it's the Shades um, of Blue Soccer Show, and that's how we do things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it fits right in, man. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe maybe I should go. Hang on, let me let me pull up a specific image. That way, we're not just looking at like a drum roll, th- a bunch of thumbnails on a Dropbox link of of what this is going to look like. There we go. Are you are you waiting? Are you like 
gonna like look for our reaction when you pop it up there? No, because I won't be able to see anything. So I'm gonna I'm gonna completely rely on Thomas to <laughs> uh, to do all of this. Um, Thomas, you're gonna have to give me give me a, a recap later. Um, I mean, I can already tell you it's gonna be a great reaction. So yeah, I'm yeah, assuming I mean... <laughs> it will be. If it's not burnt ends and <laughs> oh, oh, barbecue sauce hey, colored. Hey. That's for 23. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We got to, we got to, we got to stop kind of overselling what we're going to like. We don't want to trade anything out early and, and ruin some stories for the future. All yeah, right. The plans for seven years down the road. The barbecue might be on there. You never know. <laughs> All right. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, just gentlemen here on the screen, ladies listening to the pod. Yes. Um, introducing state line 3.0. There is, is the state line. It's back. David has his hand up. There's a smile. Yes. There's a fist pump. So I love it. Um, this and is, it goes uh, through the crest too. That, it does it go through, through the, the angle of the crest. Yeah, yeah. So what, what we're looking at is it's it's a uh, it's a tighter shot, um, a detail shot on the front of uh, what we're calling State Line 3.0. It is uh, State Line 1.0, 2011, the inaugural Sporting Kansas City kit with a single needle stitch oh, that I ran. Know all the way through the crest, directly lined up with the crest. Um, state line 2.0 or the state line split kit that we, we you know, uh, famously now wore for the 2013 MLS Cup final. Um, the split kit that we discussed is, is still one of my favorites in the history of the club and unfortunately can't ever bring it back, but, um, but uh, just a really cool kit. And this, was, this is a new way to talk about the state line story for us. And uh, it is a state line pattern embossed Repeating with nine one three and eight one six, the area codes obviously. Oh, I love that that line. Kansas City, the two so state good. lines. So I can zoom in a little bit more for you guys here. Um, you can see how it's a kind of a really cool tight emboss. Um, and the embossing was something we played with a lot this year to get right and make sure it stood out enough because uh, it, it can be a subtle pattern, but it really really shows up in pictures. It catches light really cool. So um, we'll be able to see that. Just, on that's the, what I care on about. A broadcast. That's- you will, I, you, I, in fact, I'll show you some other photos here in a second where depending on the light, you're just like, wow, that's there, there. Um, right. But also importantly, you know, featured on it, um, the, the very first look at the, uh, yeah. the, the compass minerals, the new compass minerals look on this. Um, and, and this is a, this is a really fun, such a super nerdy sporting Kansas city thing, something I'm really excited about. And we'll go look at some other stuff here in a second. Um, let's scroll down and we'll look at some more details here, but actually let's take a look at Nicholas E.C. Mount Marine smiling in this kit um uh nicholas <laughs> holding it up there but as you can see that the state line pattern that runs it's kind of a repeating pattern across the, the chest um absolutely catches the light it's really kind of sharp and contrasty which mm-hmm. is which is kind of cool because like i said that was something that we really wanted to make sure that this story stood out it wasn't just going to be a subtle state line pattern um we played with a lot of different options and thomas and i you know we looked at we looked at is there a version of this where it's uh an actual like sporting blue like our light blue repeating line and it didn't work for some production reasons it didn't work for some potential sponsor conflict region reasons um you know you'll have to remember as we were working on this what 18 24 months ago we didn't know what what sponsor was going to be on the front of this kit um and so you you got to make sure as you're designing these things that you're taking into account you know everything like that you don't want it to to conflict you don't want it to contrast i think we talked last year on the pod about about the argyle and the ivy funds or excuse me the ivy investments mark a couple years back how you couldn't do argyle and the ivy leaf at the same time and make it work um and so you know you got to take a lot of those kinds of things into account but then then the details that i think um are we're really really excited about and and really matter on this kit where where it comes back into that storytelling um so across the back neck uh inside back neck of the kit is a, uh, a strip on the neck tape that says two states, one city, one club, which is a phrase we introduced at the back of the neck, the outside last season. This year, we brought it back again. Um, we might have introduced it last year for a reason, guys, because we knew where we were headed with the state line kit 3.0 coming um, and a story we wanted to tell. Um, and it also features a little bit of an Argyle diamond and an 816 and a 913 kind of calling calling out specifically um, those, uh, the, 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 again, the area codes. And then at the back neck on the outside um, is a really cool icon we're really, really excited about. We worked with uh, the city of Kansas City, Kansas on this. We worked with the Nelson Atkins Museum here in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, and so it's an icon, it's an interlock, if you will, of the, uh, the shuttlecock um, that obviously is so kind of ubiquitous in Kansas City iconography now, uh, matched up with 
the Rosedale Arch, the Rosedale Memorial Arch from Kansas City, Kansas, which as a, as a dot guy myself is something I grew up knowing about. Um, and the Rosedale Memorial Arch was actually constructed uh, after World War I to honor the residents of like the Rosedale neighborhood specifically who fought in World War I um, for the United States. And, um, and then since then it has been turned into uh, also a World War II, Korean War, Vietnam uh, Memorial as well. Um, and anybody who, who knows the Rosedale Arch uh, can tell you it has the best, the single best view of the downtown Kansas City skyline, in, downtown Kansas City, Missouri skyline in all of Kansas, in all of Kansas City. It is beautiful. It's especially beautiful in the spring and the fall when you can get up there in the spring and it's really green in the fall when it's kind of, you get the amber and you get the, the, um, uh, the leaves changing and all like that. But so, um, like I said, we worked specifically with the Nelson Atkins Museum to get permission. You have to get permission to use this the right way yeah. um, to put the shuttlecock, shuttlecock on the kit, um, work with the Kansas City, the, the city of Kansas City, Kansas government of Wyandotte County to uh, feature the Rosedale Arch and tell those stories. And, you know, it's something that I think we've talked on this pod before. Kansas City architecture is tough to feature. Like what, what defines Kansas City architecturally? And there's, there's, um, especially when you're trying to talk about something on both sides of the state line. And we were really, really pleased to, to do this and to get to tell this story. And then if you look really closely in there, you can see all the shading, still state line features. I see David yeah. sees it there. Um, yeah. So still state line features. So that was, yeah. um, this is state line 3.0 and it's a love letter to, to our city. It's um, that's what it is. As I'm kind of scrolling back through some pictures here where the guys can see, you know, we got Cam Duke smiling. We got Gotti Akeen to smile. And then, then some cool behind the scenes stuff from our, our shoot down in Arizona um, the last cool days or the last couple of days. And so, uh, you know, you've got uh, Johnny Russell, captain wearing it here and, and Thad for your purposes, I keep looking at it here and being like, look at how that, look at that, how, how that emboss catches that light, you know? Yeah. Um, yep. And so that's, uh, that's been really cool. And, you know, this is, the story we're telling on this is really simple. It's it's that this, the idea of the state line has been a thread since the beginning of this club. It's it, it literally a single needle stitch in the, in the inaugural 2011 kit, honoring kind of the one iconic thing that our city was founded on. Um, and not only does it anchor our shield, Cody, as you kind of said, you know, that the line on the kit, the pattern on the kit runs directly behind the state line on our shield, on the shirt. Um, because that's the kind of detail that mattered to us to be like, how do you just do a pattern and not have it line up with the one most important single, most important thing on your shirt, which is, which is that shield. And so, um, you know, this, this, this story means a lot to us and, um, the eight, one, six, nine, one, three, this, like I said, it's a love letter to our, to our city. And really in a lot of ways, it's kind of a love letter to, to all of the Midwest, you know, we, we, we would love to think of ourselves as kind of the, the, the club that if you grew up a Midwest soccer player, this is your club, right? You know, um, and, and this means kind of, it all starts here though. It all starts at that state line, at Caw Point, at, you know, at the, 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 the places that Kansas City was founded on. And, um, and that's what that two states, one city, one club thing really, really means to us. So um, T, anything I missed there? I just, I just filibustered for like three minutes. <laughs> No, I mean, you, you nailed it all. I mean, I, I do, this one was a, uh, was a special one to work on just, I mean, from the beginning and it, we, you know, we said it earlier where it was maybe not so subtly, we've been asking, Hey, what do you want to see? And so it was fun to take a different interpretation on the, on the state line. Um, and we knew we wanted to, to feature these two area codes that prominently make up, you know, just, just the two sides of the city. Um, I mean, Chad, you know, we wish, we could include all the ones, like you said, from, you know, yeah. the entire Midwest that, that we, you know, that we kind of claim that we want to be the Midwest MLS team here. Um, you guys can't see this, but I'm making sarcastic quotes. That's a legal issue. Turns out we can't claim those. Um, <laughs> St. Louis doesn't matter anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I, I just think that it's, it is such a unique take on it. I think it's, it's a very, I, I love the look of it. I love the, the, the Navy, Navy, Navy look of that. It looks great. Um, yes. the, the subtle, you know, emboss actually really does turn up really well in all of these photos and it turns up really well in person. And, you know, when you guys see it in person, you'll, you'll notice that it, it's not, it, everything was done with a purpose in it. And that's, you know, two years of working, you, you know, we worked with different ways of doing it. Like you said, the pinstriping, some, some different variations of the, of the ones that we got, Chad, and this was the one that, 
that that won out. It, it worked really well. And Thad, you'll remember especially the embossing on this one's kind of funny, but Thad, you'll definitely remember that that original uh, 2011 Dark Indigo secondary yep. kit. The, the, it's it's a similar process to that, but the embossing is so much starker on it now. But I kind of like this as a nod back to that in a lot of ways too. You know, everything everything about that 2011 storytelling was about the state line, and this is similar. Um, this is a really special note for me personally, and I know we talked about this on the pod a couple of years ago. This is the very, very first Sporting Kansas City secondary kit to feature all Sporting Blue and Indigo as the colors and the accents. The sponsor mark, the Compass Mineral sponsor mark is in Sporting Blue. The names and numbers on the back will be in Sporting Blue, which that's the first time oh, wow. um, we've ever cool. done that. And, uh, you know, oftentimes we'll include some silver or something like that in there as well. This one is straight up sporting blue and indigo and if you guys remember i talked about that on the pod a couple of years ago we're back like we wanted to get back to telling that story because that's who we are i joked about the netherlands earlier turning on the tv and knowing it's the netherlands this is this is part of that same storytelling you know you turn on the tv and you see our sporting blue and indigo hoops you should know that's that's sporting kansas city you turn on the tv and you see this dark blue dark indigo and sporting blue you should know it's sporting kansas city and so that's a that's such a huge part of what our brand is um and we'll stop talking now and let you guys ask questions or or uh david celebrate your prediction of the state line well so well but uh but bar- barbecue but yeah, barbecue. yeah you, right, wanted, right. you wanted all the barbecue places on both right. sides of the state line to be that's, that's right you know that's what right. you know what you know. there's there's absolutely nothing stopping you from like identifying exactly where joe's is exactly where slaps is exactly where each gates is like that's you can do that you got a map in front of you now chad i'm so happy you threw in a slaps reference i'm oh, a <laughs> dot adjacent i'm gonna claim dot adjacent and so i oh. i rep for slaps um, well, so I remember, you know, you guys talked once about how um, the diagonal uh, primary kit from a couple of years ago um, that I think had a, a nickname among the fan base, uh, given our performance in the field that I'm not going to repeat, but that was, uh, Thomas, you referred to that almost as like the evolution of the hoops, right? It wasn't hoops 3.0, yep. it was like two and a half. Um, and this is, you know, obviously state line, but it reminds me a lot of hoops 2.0 when we went with the, the indigo and then like the darker hoops across, this is almost like that the next evolution of that. And that's one of my personal favorite kits that we've ever done. If you guys, uh, if you guys go check out the sporting style, I'll give away a secret here. If you guys check out the sporting style posts for the last week, they may have been um, almost all of them as we kind of looked back at fresh kits in the history of the club, all of them may have been strategically placed to tell some stories like that and feature some, uh, so the last two days at this point have been the tonal kit from the tonal hoops uh, hoops 2.0 David's talking about, and then uh, the uh, the 2013 state line kit. So yeah, no, we uh, we think about these things sometimes. So you're 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 spot on. It feels a lot like that in its execution. Well, to me, it's like it, it layers different stories together, and it that's what it's bringing it together. It's like not just the t- the state line kit, but it is the the old original primary kit or the the secondary kit it's combining all of those little things together so it's it's kind of layering those stories together at the same time it really is like, like almost an homage back at 11 12 years of jerseys now the, the more that i think about it and and you know whether some of that was intentional or unintentional like you know it, when it came together it's kind of at, there's times it's reminded me of 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 you know so many different things that we've done over the years um and, and it's been, it's been like, I, again, I can't tell you how excited I am to have sporting blue numbers on the back of this. I think it's going to look so freaking cool. Um, you know, I think that, that those kinds of Agreed. things really, really tie it together. Um, yeah, we're, we're excited about it. And, and, you know, it's, it's a story that, that I hope resonates to people here in, in market and, and, um, you know, like that it, it, it's, We've talked a lot also about how always we want to have something that you can wear. Um, you know, you can, you can wear in a bar, you can wear in, in, um, I almost said church, nobody wears jerseys to church, but they damn well should. Um, but like, you know, you could, you could wear it in a bar, you could wear it to the grocery store, you could wear it. And like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel weird. We're so lucky in soccer that you can do that 
with with our gear and I don't care who you are you always look weird wearing a, a NBA jersey you know out in public like and that sucks for the NBA like you're at an NBA game hey man more power to you but it's a tough thing to wear sometimes and so um, we're so so lucky and frankly if this team if this town wasn't so Chiefs crazy you know like there's a lot of cities where you walk around wearing a football jersey and people look at you sideways but nobody ever looks at, looks at you sideways with Soccer jersey, and I think that this is one of those jerseys that that can be worn anywhere, and it and maybe maybe not church. Don't wear it to church, but um, but you could wear it just about anywhere, and 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 it and it fits right in, which is always really cool. All right, so Cody, what's your first thoughts on it, man? I like it very much. That's uh the eight one six nine one three embossed lines. I dig that so much, and uh and yeah the. The all all indigo, the all the same color. I yeah, it's until you said that. I guess I kind of knew it was unique for that reason. But but yeah, that that hits at home now that a, the full jersey has never been all that same color like that. I I was actually reminded about it today that because I in my head we wore sporting blue or in my head the very first Ivy funds was in sporting blue on the, oh, yeah. on the indigo kit, but it wasn't, it was in white because the numbers were, were white back then. Your, your options were white, black, or Navy. And so the numbers were white on those kits in 2011 and 12 and 13. And so it actually, I knew the numbers were white, but it never hit me that the sponsor logo wasn't in sporting blue until Kurt Austin, our, our director of communications <laughs> reminded me today. And I was like, Oh, that's a, that's really cool too. I hadn't even thought about like that extra tack on. I've, I was just excited about names and numbers being in sporting blue. <laughs> Thad, are you brave enough to uh, express some disapproval with them on the call here? I am brave enough to express some disapproval, but I'm not going to. <laughs> I, I want to say, because I Chad knows, I've every time I've ever talked to him about these things, you know, when we first get to look, it's like, yeah, I'm not sure. I don't like this. I don't like that. I can't see anything about this I don't like. So, I mean, I still want to see it in person because that always makes a difference. I want to see it have photographs because that's a point to me. But I like all of it, man. It's to me, it's, um, I, I like that it's all sporting colors, obviously, because we've always talked, we've talked about that in the past. I like that to me, it's simple, but it's not simple at the same time. It's not playing. Does that make sense? It's, it's not, going way over the top with, you know, bloodstains on a couch look of Portland or something like that. Right. It's. Yeah. Simple, simple, but not plain. That's a good descriptor. It's, it's classy as far as a soccer Jersey can be. So I like it. This is probably one of my favorite jerseys I've as a first look. So it's, it's right there, man. David, how about you? Well, I'm going to be less professional than you two. I'm going to buy one. I'm going full fanboy on this. Let's I'm go. Do you do you have a promo code? Is there like I will be <laughs> less professional than all of you and just ask for a free one. How about that? There, can I can I use code Chad2022 to get 10%? No, or no. Like, is it uh, Thomas is it Thomas something is the guy on that world? Thomas, is it something more clever? Is it like paint the Chad instead of paint the wall? Oh, Absolutely. Yeah. Chad the wall. What do we what what's the code? Ten percent. You get no, 10%. Now I know, I, I know what our freaking playoff campaign is this year. Now it's Chad the Wall. <laughs> Chad the Wall. <laughs> no, this thing. I mean, I I love it. This might be, this might be my favorite. That you know, I've been following the team since the rebrand. I I wish I could say I'm an original like Thad, but this thing, I'm I'm a huge fan. I mean, that guys, that's awesome to hear. That's that's that's. Uh, we will we will pay you the free jerseys. We promise you guys. Uh, no, no, um, no. Uh, like the, no takesies backsies. The, the highs and the lows in that one moment. In one moment, sorry. What no, a roller like, coaster. This, is, this is, it's really funny because I will, you yeah, will be honest. We see then, you know, people start to leak bits and pieces of it and people who've seen, seen it wherever, for whatever reason, we see all that stuff, you know, like we're not, we're not blind to it. It gets texted to us. It gets emailed to us. It gets sent to us, Twitter tweeted at us or whatever. Um, and, you know, one of the comments that I've seen so far on this one is that it's really subtle and, I think it is if you're looking at maybe some of the mock-ups you're looking at, like, but I, I, you know, you can look at these photos and tell it's not it, it, in uh, that, I like what you said. It's, it's simple, but it's not plain um, yeah. because the execution is simple. And what's really, what makes this different is this could have just been a very, like, 
this could have been essentially pinstripes of, of eight, one, six, nine, one, three going straight up and down, you know, and that would have been fine. And that would have been a cool kit and that would have been a cool look, but that's not our story. That's not, it doesn't say the same thing. Um, and, and, you know, and for every, I always tell people Jersey design such a weird thing because for every, um, well, first off, if you're pleasing everybody, you're doing something wrong. Like that's always a rule, right? Like, it means you're not doing anything, um, special. Um, but for every person out there, who's just like, oh, that's too simple. I want more. I've been seeing that with some of the other kits around the league, or I thought they'd, you know, somebody said that about Vancouver. It's like, I thought they'd go off the wall with their colors. And I'm like, well, if you're Vancouver, why would you go off the wall with your colors? You're Vancouver white caps. Like I've been wearing those colors forever and ever. That's like saying, I want the green Bay Packers to not wear yellow and green. Like, um, or, or, or David, it's like saying, I want the Yankees to not wear the pinstripes. Like the Yankees don't. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, you, you see that. And, and then for every person who says, I want something crazy, David, I'll go back to Tottenham. Some of those crazy kits that you've seen, those are awesome, but they're not for everybody, you know? And, and, and when you want somebody to, to represent your club, you, you want to make that as broad as possible and make it as, as wearable as possible for, for the, the person who just wants to represent the club because they care about the club and for the person who wants something, you know, maybe a little crazier. And, and that's, that's, there's no good balance there. There's no way to do that the right way. Um, so for our part, we're always, at least as long as I'm involved and clearly Thomas and I, I think are lifers at this point, we've been here forever. Um, we're going to, we're going to fall onto story and storytelling and making sure that whatever it is means something to people um, with every, and then obviously we'll change it up and we'll do, you know, things here or there. And then as we've always talked about, give us a third kit, we'll go out and have a blast with a crazy ass third kit, um, too, because then that to me is the opportunity to really tell a story, but do it visually different too. But, you know, I'm, I'm really excited about this one. The guys, I haven't talked to him. I'm not in Arizona, but the guys seem to like it. Um, is he smiling in this photo? Um, so, um, the guys seem to have really liked it. Uh, I heard from our crew who did the shoot down there that it looks great on camera. It looks good in like, you know, video and, and that kind of thing with all these crazy lights and stuff that you'll see um, over the next couple of weeks as we roll out some of this stuff. So we're really excited about it. And um, I, you know, for my part personally, state line 3.0 means something because the first two state lines meant something um, and, and we'll always continue to and in a decade or whatever, when we roll out state line 4.0, it'll damn well mean something too. Um, so uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty stoked about it. I, I think you've done really well with this one, man. So yes, I, congratulations. I don't want to suck up to you. It's just, it's, I wouldn't tell you, you, you know me long enough that I would tell you about you like it. Yeah. And yeah. I really like it. So. And, and, and yeah, I, we'd be remiss, honestly. Thomas and I uh, will gladly take all of the credit, and uh, but we shouldn't. Um, no, we shouldn't. Uh, th there's there's a lot of people involved in this process. Um, uh, John Monka, who uh, is, is, has left the club to go work a really, really cool job at Kansas City Power and Light and kind of run that whole area. John Monka is our former um, executive vice president of, of uh, brand revenue, and he you know, uh, was Thomas's old boss on the retail side. John was heavily involved in this jersey as well. Nate Sadoff, who I mentioned earlier, is our senior creative um, on the design side. Um, he very heavily involved in building the brand of sport in Kansas City. Nate did a lot of work on this one. Aaron Bournes, who's our VP of marketing. There's a lot of hands that are in this. You know, Jake Reed, our president and CEO, got, gets eyes on these kinds of things because he cares about these things. Mike Flaherty, the kit man, Peter Vermees. It really is kind of the old, like, it takes a village kind of thing, which can be dangerous. Cause you got a lot of cooks in that kitchen potentially. Yes. Um, a lot of but, strong personalities in that kitchen, I will say. And, and it, you know, <laughs> so getting them all on the same page is a, it's a, it's a fun battle. I would are say. Mike, are Mike and Peter opinionated? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> opinionated. Yeah. You know what? We'll just go with the word opinionated. <laughs> <laughs> but Mike, but like, but that's part of the reason we have that, that, that seven year kit plan too, you know, and honestly ownership gets involved. Cliff, Cliff, like Mike Gillick have both seen this, you know, Met several times throughout the process, the Patterson family, um, and, and, and uh, Rob Heineman and all of our owners kind of get glimpses of it. Uh, did we show it to Patrick when he, I don't think we showed it to Patrick when we had, when we had him in for, for some stuff, but, um, but like, there's a lot of potentially, you know, like you said, a lot of cooks in that kitchen and a lot of strong opinions, but that's why we have a seven-year plan. 
and that's why everybody is is knows what the heck's going on and knows the story that we're trying to tell um and ultimately storytelling you know it matters to our fans uh, so it matters to the club well, i think that's mission accomplished the story is very clear here it's being received well in this group at least so i think you guys uh, i think you guys have a winner here and uh congratulations yeah totally awesome. agree thank you that. yeah thank you We've We're kept Thomas from it. his dinner date uh, for like an hour now. My bad, T. I, oh, we lost track of time. Yeah, All I apologize, good. Thomas. All good. I think this was one of those those fun ones in chat. I mean, it's actually funny, you know, with them getting the first look at it. Uh, it was a little bit like us getting the first look at it. Right. Way, you know, like we, you know, we talked so much about the process and it's two years down the road, you know, like we're working on 24 at this point. And so this time of year, you almost forget, you know, you're so focused on two years and 23 already well getting to see 22 now in the flesh and on the guys it reinvigorates us in that yeah. whole scenario you know because it feels now you know towards the end of 21 everything this one felt old and it's like we had released it because we already knew what it looked like and it was finished and it's being shipped well now that it's here and it's being released like we're excited about it again as we were two years ago one year ago when we were getting prototypes and now again like that was fun to see and kind of get that that release again and and like we said earlier, you know, what, whenever it goes live to the public, like that is what we all strive for. And that's our game day in this scenario. And so, uh, you know, all the work going into that release, it's a lot of fun to get that reaction. Yeah, good, bad, indifferent, you know, like it, it elicits a response and that's what we want. Um, and, and hopefully, obviously, majority is, is very good, which, you know, the, basing on this one, um, I think we should have a... T, have you got to place a bigger order. Clearly, I mean, based off this, 100%. <laughs> satisfaction place a yeah. bigger order well and if everybody's just all in it just uh get us over that threshold to get the third then yeah i do need to place a, a bigger order and we'll get them out there yeah i'll do podcast. my part for that this year i need a third kid again I well and seriously though it's 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 funny because t was talking about that like the, the, it, there's a bit of a kid, kid in a candy store thing for us when the prototypes come in and then and then, so now it's like, God, it's been a year since we saw it, you know, and, and he's right. You, you almost lose a little bit of that luster until yesterday, until today, until, you know, um, God's honest truth at three forty six in the morning, I got the email from a production company down in Arizona who shot the, the shoot. You guys saw some behind the scenes stuff of, um, with, as the email said, 99 gigabytes of raw footage from a red camera and these are you know these are like stupid red wrap your expensive incredible beautiful cameras yep. like great color depth all this kind of stuff and like my phone buzzed at 3 45 in the morning and i was like what the heck and i woke up and i looked at it i was like no don't open that file because if i open the file i'll be up all night looking at it you know what i mean i was that excited to kind of see it in that chad in that you're kit. a light sleeper dude i am it's a thing um <laughs> It's absolutely your, a thing. Turn your but, email notifications off, my guy. <laughs> yeah, do not disturb. That probably, probably overnight. should overnight. No, no. You Sleep know what? Mode. Normally, I do have do not disturb on, and I turned off do not disturb uh, last night because those guys started sh setting up for the shoot at three in the morning. Oh, wow. They had an, they had oh, an hour with the players, and so they started setting up for the shoot at three in the morning. And like Jordan Burrell, who's our senior creative on the video side, is down in Arizona with the team, and I trust Jordan like with my life. But also, it's really hard to stay like it's really hard to sleep in that moment when like your production company's rolling in at three in the morning to start setting up. And like, what if the shit hit the fan on something? Yeah. Like no, nobody answered the door at the hotel or something like <laughs> that. Like, you know, and, and, and everything was fine, but I, I turned off, do not disturb in case I got the panic phone call and I just forgot to turn it on last night. And so when my phone did buzz this morning, I was like, what the <laughs> is going on? And then I had to talk myself out of going and look, you know, getting out of bed and going and looking at all the footage. So it is, it, it, there's a, the, the kid in the candy store thing, as he said, this is our game day. This is what we get up for in a lot of ways. Um, and yeah, so this week is exciting and, and we clearly lose a lot of sleep over it to, to get it there. But um, well, you're but in the home stretch and yeah. less than 24 hours here. And unless David has screen recorded this and he is going to leak it in the morning, I think you guys are all good. <laughs> I'd like to keep my spot on the pod and not get banned from. <laughs> yes, and and yeah. officially, if any one of us leaked it, they would be off the pod and they would be off the site at least well, for a while. So, and right. we would know because the only people yes. who have this link are on this call are me, right. and you know. So, um, yeah. so it, yeah, know, we, 
I would hey. be, I would, you know, I've actually had like images of jerseys before it was, yeah. and I've held off because I, I want you guys to be able to present the story, right? I don't we always love the story. That. I don't always love the, the jersey, but I want you guys to have your opportunity to present it, not show some bad photos, you know, uh, well, and he's also the phone kind of thing. He's being modest here. He's also doing it in the hopes that one of these days the team is like, all right, Blue Testament, here's an actual scoop for you. That's our, that's the goal there. <laughs> Well, hang on. I give you. I'll give you an actual scoop. You want an actual scoop? Oh yes. Thomas is like, what's he gonna say? Yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Hey, hit me. Actual scoop. Spoiler alert. Yes, the state line block party was named on purpose. Weird, weird how that worked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I no, actually. I, I guess I missed speculate. that. I missed that announcement. Those... Where? When is that party? Not state line block party. It's actually this is going to be really really cool. I'm excited about this. State line block party is is next Sunday, the 27th, um, down on 39th Street in uh, in Casey Mo. Um, right in, in my neighborhood. Neighbor- huh? Right in my neighborhood. I can make it. There you go. You can walk over. Um, weather weather is supposed to be much nicer than today. Yeah. Not that that takes a lot, but um, but yeah, uh, we're shutting down. Uh, is it two three square blocks of 39th Street? Oh um, wow! I think it's two blocks. Yeah, um, all the businesses in town are down there are really, really excited on board with this. We're we're going to set up a giant screen. Obviously, have you know the the match against Atlanta on national TV. Um, on oh, yeah. uh, we got some live music. We got uh, we got beer specials. We got uh, food specials. We got all sorts of cool stuff going on down there. Yard games, all the all the like. Uh, we're we're hoping, fingers crossed, you'll be able to buy the jersey. Um, but you know, shipment shipping shipping is what it is, and. Um, uh, no, it's going to be really, really fun, and I'm excited for this. And it was an idea that came about. It's actually an idea that's been in the works for about two years uh, to to have a state line block party and to do something as close to the literal state line that we possibly could while we unveiled this jersey. I think we yet. suggested that a couple of years, man. Uh, David's asking, we'll be able to buy the jersey at the Rieger STM event. Which oh, you're going to say excellent about question. Now. I don't know. Oh yeah, it's a great, you it's a great question. Out. I'm I'm trying to. I'm well. I was I'm typing it because I don't want to. Tell, you know, I think everybody should go to that event anyway. Yeah. Want to like? I'm trying to get us to that third kit. So you know, if you need to <laughs> promote the Rieger event, you can get the jersey at the Rieger event. Then. Yeah. If you're a season ticket member, you should you should reserve your tickets to the uh, to the, the the season ticket member exclusive event um, at uh, Jay Rieger and Company Distillery, which is next week. I, you know what? I won't give out the date. That's an exclusive it's, it's, for the season ticket members. It's Tuesday. Tuesday. Guys, we're not giving out the date. It's an exclusive for the season ticket. Members. Apparently, season ticket holders already know about it. We're going to we'll be able to buy price. the jersey on Tuesday. Thomas, we don't think so, right? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, probably not. Um, but not because not because you don't want them to be able to. Oh, right? I would have loved to have had them. Um, trust me. So, uh, no, they will go on sale. MLSstore.com tomorrow. Um, they'll launch. Um, and then they also will be available for pre-order pickup on sportingstyle.com. Um, Both of these on Friday, not tomorrow, Thomas. Today's sorry, Friday. And, today. and they are fake. currently today. live. They're currently live on sportingstyle.com. And uh, for, for pre-order pickup at, at CMP, um, you'll get a notification when it's ready. And then they're available on MLSstore.com um, as well. So, yeah, go buy them. Via yeah, you got a good setup there. That's good. So, Thomas, is it is it better to buy through sporting style and through the club than through MLS. Like it's, it's, it's actually better to buy. It's actually better to buy out of Thomas's trunk. Um, That's also an option. We can make that happen. Promo code paint the Chad. I got a a box right here and uh, and just tell me what size you are. It's best to buy it from here. No, uh, no, we, you know, it, it really, it doesn't make a difference to us. We, we obviously love, you know, we have some exclusive stuff at the stadium and we hope that 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 appeals to everybody. Um, But, but knowing that, you know, we're not open 365 right now. So um, MLS store is a perfect one, especially for the convenience of having it shipped to your house since we do not do that. Um, so, you know, whatever's convenient for, for them, um, they run a lot of good deals. So MLS store is a great option, but yeah, we like to have some exclusives, uh, at the stadium, you know, maybe some wizard stuff that's not carried here and there at, uh, at MLS store. So we like to keep it fresh at the, at the stadium. You know, that's it's, uh, the wizard's word. He did oh, say the wizard's word. Maybe that's a that's a scoop that we there might be a wizard's item or two this year. <laughs> okay. Okay. What about an SKC two soccer ball hat? Ooh, one of one. Right here. <laughs> right here. I mean, I might can, I might let it go for the right price though. Yeah. That's the drawer that I like that I want to see at the at this office. Is not not the one of the jerseys, just the one of all these 
failed attempts that someone wants you to buy a bunch of these. That's the, that's would, the drawer I want to see. It would actually be so fun to do like a video feature on that or like, a yeah. uh, you know, Al, Ali Trost, who is now uh, Ali Trost, our sideline reporter, who's now um, a full-time staffer at the club has got some really cool ideas for some content this year, some video podcasts, some video series, those, those of kinds of does. things. Yeah. I mean, you guys know Ali. She's, she's great at this stuff. Right. Um, and she's full of ideas. Um, she was uh, a farm team for you guys. You know that, right? <laughs> that's yeah. true. That's a good point. Allie did get her start right here. Um, uh, Allie, like Allie and I've been kind of batting around the, some ideas for some things that like left on the cutting room floor from the one club book. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff that we weren't able to squeeze into a 208 page book. Um, but, uh, but it'd be really fun to do this with like a, like a, like a, a grab bag out of the, uh, the, the party box drawer, if you will. The problem is it would feel like shaming some people. Like, I don't think we could go down that road because, you know, we might actually buy a, another product from, from some of these companies down the road. Um, no, that's there. It, there's some really cool stuff. And David, I'm glad you asked that question about, is it better for us to, for, you know, the club, if you purchase from sporting style or MLS store, um, you know, there's a, there's a slight financial difference, but we don't care. We want people wearing sporting gear. You know what I mean? Like that's what matters. Thomas is nodding his head, which is great because his bottom line is the one that's actually affected by that. But that's fair. But no, I mean, I, the MLS store one, we, we talked about it. We want to be Midwest MLS team, not just the people who live here and can, can get to the stadium on a game day or uh, you know, on the, the few days or these events, anything like that. But the people in Omaha, St. Louis, you know, there's Iowa city, Des Moines, you know, all of these towns that maybe they don't get down here enough to come and shop at these events, MLS store is the great option for them, you know? And so, so we love it and we love directing them to that because that's, what's convenient for them. And so I, I think that that's kind of the biggest thing, but yeah, Chad, I mean, yeah, I mean, when you come to the games on, you know, the 17 home games that we have, yeah, I'd like you to buy from one of the eight sporting <laughs> style locations around Children's Mercy Park. Hey, you know what you should check out is the mobile ordering. The mobile ordering is actually really cool. Yeah, um, mobile ordering, super convenient. You buy it before the game, and it's waiting for you at the game. So, and that's I'll, I'll where, get a plug in. That's where you get the exclusive items that maybe are sold out by the time you get to the game. So, shop early on Sporting Style. There, it's usually available there when we when we tweet those out. So, that is a good tool. I I legitimately did not know that. It's really really cool. All you have to do is have a ticket to the match, and you can you can uh, you can pre order on SportingStyle.com via mobile order. It's really great. A lot of the good stuff sells out. I mean before the game starts but I'm not a, on mobile ordering well right but like i'm a cauldron member well was a cauldron member i used to show up hour and a half before games and you know some of the really cool like t-shirts and scarves the wizards stuff. retro stuff that's like impossible to get yeah yep i hit three different locations there trying to find a shirt one day well hey, now, now being a friend of the pod i don't know maybe we can help out i'm <laughs> There we go. You're, you're welcome back anytime, Thomas. We'll, we'll, and we'll let you bring Chad too. Yeah, I was going to say, I get the, I get the once a year invite. Now they're just like, Thomas, come on every week. Yeah. Like, well, so we, we always talk. say every year you come on once a year and we say, Oh man, that was so much fun. We got to do, we got to keep doing this. And then it never happens. So yeah, we'll make sure to do that this year. Yeah. Hey, uh, another, another cool thing about the Rieger event though, just uh, if you are a season ticket member, you know, there, there always is exclusive uh, Rieger sporting Kansas city merchandise available, um, which is pretty cool. Um, I don't remember. I think we have a cool scarf this year. I'm trying to remember what else we've got going on. There may or may not be a new Rieger sporting Kansas city whiskey bottle I was um, say, and, and an actual yeah. liquor, I think. Right. Yeah. And it turns out they do have booze and it's delicious. Um, Everybody's <laughs> favorite part. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and that, that event, if, and I, you know, I'll, I'll just pitch our friends over at um, our friends and partners over at J Rieger co distillery where we are. Um, we are the official sports team of J Rieger co distillery uh, flipping some things on its head. They're not the official whiskey of us. We're their official sports team, which is kind of fun. Um, but if you haven't been down there since they've expanded, they've added the new electric park area. They've had, they've added a bunch of stuff. It's awesome down there. It's, it was already a cool space. They took what was a really cool space and made it even bigger and better. So I'm actually personally excited about that event. Um, uh, David, if you're going to be down there, I'll be, I'll buy you a drink. Um, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a, a, I'm really excited to be at that event on uh, Tuesday night. Cause it is, oh, damn it. I said the day, uh, whatever day of the week that is, but it is, <laughs> it is, it's, 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 it's I think it's a really cool perk for our season ticket members, you know, like that's a cool, fun event. You get to come in, you get to paint the wall, you get to do all sorts of cool stuff. You get access to the bottle uh, if there's a bottle um, before, you know, before the general public, those kinds of things. 
And, um, you know, that's, that's why other than coming to 17 to 20 to 22, you know, can sporting Kansas city matches at children's mercy park every year. That's why you're a season ticket member. It's for all the other stuff that makes you feel like you're a part of this club. And that's just a really cool access one that, that exists. Absolutely. So now you got me convinced I should go. There you go, Fed. All right. Well, we come in just a just a casual two hour podcast tonight. Well done, gentlemen. <laughs> well, well, Cody. Before we wrap, I have one last thing. Yeah. We we started, Chad. You say you listen, so we're gonna see how much you act, how much truth. Oh God, I'm on the spot. Uh oh. Uh, we we started a new segment. It won't be every week, but because we've got two pods this week, we started a new segment. Oh God, what was it called? Only. Wrong answers only. Oh yeah, that's right. And we have had a, a fair amount of food talk and food smack talk uh, about the our neighbors to the east. So wrong answers only. If we're putting a new barbecue spot at Children's Mercy Park, what is it and why? <laughs> Thomas, you have to go. Uh, well, I don't know what it would be called. That's your that's your department, but I mean, it would absolutely serve pork steaks. <laughs> that's the name that's steak. not a wrong answer that's the that, no no Ed likes it no no, no it's, it's absolutely the wrong answer in kansas city because yeah. i don't think even kansas cityans know what pork steaks are never heard of oh, it oh god it's st louis nope. style it's it, the, the name of the barbecue place is st louis style pork steaks yeah and and see that's why you're just creative right there with that that's answer. a really good answer st louis style <laughs> pork steaks it's a good answer and in contrast to gates where you walk up and they ask Hi, may I help you? When you walk up, they ask, where'd you go to high school? Yes. <laughs> or if they're from Kansas City, they say, what is wrong with you? And go to go to, uh, go to American Royal or BRGR. So I can get some more food out of Children's yeah, Mercy. Yeah, yeah. That's the, the truth is we have amazing barbecue at Children's Mercy Park. And in fact, I saw some, some a sneak peek of some of the new menu items uh, just the other day. New food items coming out. So um, yeah, hey, media, hey, media day, man. That's why I go to media day is just to get uh, the food. Fad El Capitan has some absolute fire new menu or new menu items. The the our, our our Latin American street food stand has some incredible new menu items. So, which is good because the food provided to the media is normally not so great. So, I mean that's what that. that's what Thomas and I eat every game too. So, good point. All right, uh, did you did you answer? Are you who me? I mean, one of you one of you picked St. Louis. No, I'm just I'm just piggybacking on Thomas's St. Louis style pork steaks. Uh, I think that's the name. I think that's the name of the restaurant. Um, They're a team. Yeah, we we we, we we're okay. a package deal, unfortunately. God, that's good. We have, I mean, like the other joke is obviously around cheese product. Um, I just don't know. I don't have it. Yeah, I'll come back to you. I'll like I'll I'll tweet at you guys when I come up with a good like. I mean, you can just call it barbecue product. That counts. That's a barbecue just, product. Uh, yeah, it's not they, really a because we the, really want it. Just put a, a White Castle in in Children's oh, Park, and we'll we'll call it a day. That's a problem though, because I do love White Castle. Yeah, I'm not yeah. a. I'm a. That's I, a. I was bummed when White Castle left Kansas City because yeah, it used that, to be here. They, yeah, they, well, and founded in Wichita, right? Didn't White Castle start in Wichita, Kansas? So, like, Something like we've that. really gone off on a tangent. Got to get them back. And, gotta That's get what them we're back. all about. I live for it. <laughs> all right, guys. Well, thank you very much for coming on. And, yes, we will definitely do this again before the one-year mark. Love it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe hey, maybe it. we'll come on and talk about uh, Retro Night. Ah, yes. okay. That'd be, that'd be Perfect. Any excuse. Yeah. So just let us know when you want to come on because we won't know exactly when that's coming up until we don't we don't either very actually soon. there was an email chain about it today we're gonna we're gonna announce that date very soon <laughs> yeah we're already that's already trying to give you more work your your day of rest is is coming but that wants hey, to give you more work already hey we want to make sure that we have the best retro product available and that's what's going to determine the date so yeah there we go. So we're we're working on the right assortment of, of what's going to be available so I think you guys will be I think you guys will like it this year so there, retro there product professional. Day. There, there's some cool stuff coming. I've, I've seen I've seen some of the stuff we got coming out this year, both for Retro Night and for some other cool stuff we got in the in the hopper. I won't uh, I won't let any more cats out of the bag. But yeah, some cool stuff coming this year on the retail side. All right, all that's left is for the team to actually play some games. Yes, absolutely. Let's go play some soccer. I'm ready for it. The all right, right on. We'll talk soon, guys. Bye, guys. Thanks. Right. You guys. Thanks, Thanks guys. Just been sent off Some part of strong and long Come stop my fun fun things Got me drinking My fun fun things Got me drinking My fun fun
things got me drinking Give me beer or whiskey, when or gin Anything to shake this foot I'm in My football things got me drinking My football things got me drinking